Dear friends, brothers, and sisters in Christ, welcome to Bible Gospel TV and Bible Gospel Radio. I'm truly blessed to have this opportunity to share God's Word with you today. As we gather in His presence, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on the radio, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open our hearts and minds to receive His message. Today we're going to explore a profound and often misunderstood concept, strength in weakness. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Preacher, that doesn't make any sense. How can weakness be a source of strength? Well, my dear friends, that's exactly what we're going to discover together as we delve into God's Word. In a world that celebrates power, success, and self-sufficiency, the idea of finding strength in weakness seems paradoxical. But as we'll see, this concept is at the very heart of the Christian faith. It's a truth that has the power to transform our lives, our relationships, and our walk with God. So let's open our Bibles and our hearts as we explore this beautiful mystery of God's kingdom. Are you ready? Let's begin. The Biblical Foundation of Strength and Weakness To understand this concept, we need to start with the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, 9-10. Let's read it together from the King James Version. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Beloved, these verses encapsulate the essence of our message today. Paul, one of the greatest apostles, is sharing a profound revelation he received from the Lord. God told him that his grace is sufficient and his strength is made perfect in weakness. Now let's consider the context. Paul had been dealing with what he called a thorn in the flesh. We don't know exactly what this thorn was. It could have been a physical ailment, a spiritual struggle, or a persistent temptation. What we do know is that it was something that made Paul feel weak and inadequate. Paul pleaded with God three times to remove this thorn, but God's response wasn't to take away the weakness. Instead, he revealed to Paul that his grace was sufficient and that his power would be displayed more perfectly through Paul's weakness. This, my friends, is the foundation of our understanding of strength in weakness. It's not about pretending to be strong when we're not. It's about recognizing our weaknesses and allowing God's strength to shine through them. A personal reflection. Let me share a personal story with you. A few years ago, I was asked to speak at a large conference. It was an incredible opportunity, but I was terrified. Public speaking has always been one of my greatest fears. As the day approached, I felt increasingly anxious and inadequate. The night before the conference, I was on my knees, pouring out my heart to God. Lord, I prayed, I can't do this. I'm not eloquent enough, not wise enough, not good enough. Please take this cup from me. In that moment of desperation, I felt God's presence wash over me. It was as if he was saying, my child, you're right. You can't do this, but I can. Let your weakness become the stage on which my strength will perform. The next day, as I stood trembling before the crowd, I surrendered my weakness to God. And you know what? It was one of the most powerful speaking experiences of my life. The words flowed, hearts were touched, and lives were changed. Not because of my strength, but because of God's power working through my weakness. This experience taught me firsthand what Paul meant when he said, For when I am weak, then am I strong. It's a lesson I've never forgotten. Exploring the concept of strength in weakness. Now let's dive deeper into what strength in weakness really means in our Christian walk. This concept challenges our natural understanding of strength and weakness. In the world's eyes, weakness is something to be ashamed of, something to hide or overcome. But in God's economy, it's often the very thing he uses to display his power. Consider these words from 1 Corinthians 1, 27-29. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Do you see what God is doing here? He's turning our understanding upside down. 
He chooses the weak to shame the strong, the foolish to confound the wise. Why? So that no one can boast before him. This principle is woven throughout scripture. Think about some of the great heroes of faith. Moses, who stuttered and felt inadequate as a speaker, became God's mouthpiece to Pharaoh and led the Israelites out of Egypt. Gideon, who considered himself the least in his family, was called a mighty man of valor by God and led a small army to victory against overwhelming odds. David, a young shepherd boy, defeated the giant Goliath with just a sling and a stone, relying on God's strength rather than human might. In each of these cases, God didn't choose the strongest, the most eloquent, or the most qualified. He chose those who were weak in the world's eyes, but willing to rely on his strength. This brings us to a crucial point. Strength and weakness is not about becoming strong in ourselves. It's about becoming weak enough to rely fully on God's strength. It's about surrendering our self-sufficiency and allowing God's power to work through us. The Apostle Paul understood this well. In 2 Corinthians 4, 7 he writes, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not of us. We are but earthen vessels, fragile, imperfect, and weak. But within us, we carry the treasure of God's power. Our weakness becomes the perfect backdrop for His strength to shine. Applying strength and weakness to our daily lives. Now, my dear friends, you might be wondering, how do I apply this principle to my life? How can I find strength in my weakness? First, we need to be honest about our weaknesses. This can be uncomfortable. We live in a world that tells us to hide our flaws, to present a perfect image. But God calls us to a different standard. He invites us to acknowledge our weaknesses, not to wallow in them, but to bring them to Him. Take a moment right now to reflect. What are your weaknesses? Is it a struggle with temptation? A fear that holds you back? A past mistake that haunts you? Whatever it is, I want you to know that God isn't surprised or disappointed by your weakness. In fact, He's waiting for you to bring it to Him so He can display His strength through it. Second, we need to surrender our weaknesses to God. This means letting go of our attempts to overcome them in our own strength. It means saying, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I need your strength. Third, we need to trust in God's sufficiency. Remember what God told Paul? My grace is sufficient for thee. His grace, his unmerited favor and empowering presence is enough. It's all we need. Fourth, we need to step out in faith. When God calls us to do something that seems beyond our abilities, we need to remember that He doesn't call the qualified, He qualifies the called. Your weakness is not a disqualification, it's an opportunity for God to show His strength. Finally, we need to give God the glory. When we accomplish something despite our weaknesses, it's tempting to take the credit. But remember, the whole point of strength and weakness is that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Overcoming Challenges Now I know that embracing our weaknesses isn't easy. We face many challenges in this journey. Let's address some of them. Pride Our pride often resists the idea of being weak. We want to be self-sufficient, capable, strong. But remember the words of Proverbs 16:18: Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Humility is the key to experiencing God's strength in our weakness. Fear of vulnerability. Acknowledging our weaknesses makes us feel vulnerable. But it's in this vulnerability that we experience true connection. Both with God and with others. As James 5.16 encourages us, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. Misunderstanding God's purpose. Sometimes we think that if we're weak, God can't use us. But the opposite is true. God delights in using the weak things of the world to accomplish His purposes. Comparison In this age of social media, it's easy to compare ourselves to others and feel inadequate. But remember, God has uniquely created and called you. Your journey is not meant to look like anyone else's. If you're struggling with these challenges, I want to encourage you with the words of Isaiah 41.10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God is with you, he will strengthen you, he will help you, he will uphold you. Rest in that promise, beloved. The Power of God's Grace As we near the end of our time together, I want to emphasize the incredible power of God's grace. 
Grace is not just God's unmerited favor, it's also His empowering presence in our lives. The Apostle Paul, who understood weakness perhaps better than anyone, wrote these powerful words in 2 Corinthians 12 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God's grace is sufficient, it's enough, it's all we need. When we are weak His grace empowers us. When we feel inadequate, His grace qualifies us. When we fail, His grace restores us. This grace is available to you right now, wherever you are, whatever you're facing. You don't have to be strong, you don't have to have it all together, you just have to be willing to receive His grace and allow His strength to work through your weakness. Remember, in God's kingdom, weakness isn't a liability, it's an opportunity. An opportunity for God to display His power. An opportunity for us to experience His grace in a profound way. An opportunity for His strength to be made perfect in our lives. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we conclude this devotion, I want to leave you with a challenge and a word of encouragement. The challenge is this. Embrace your weaknesses. Don't run from them, hide them, or try to overcome them in your own strength. Instead, bring them to God. Offer them as opportunities for His strength to be displayed in your life. The encouragement is this. God's power is made perfect in weakness. Your weaknesses, your struggles, your inadequacies, they are not obstacles to God's work in your life. They are the very stages on which His power will be displayed. So today I invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you acknowledging our weaknesses. We've tried to be strong on our own, and we've failed. Today, we surrender our weaknesses to you. We invite your strength to work in us and through us. Help us to rely not on our own power, but on your all-sufficient grace. May our lives display your strength, and may all the glory be yours. In Jesus' name, Amen. Remember, beloved, when you are weak, then you are strong, because his strength is made perfect in your weakness. May you walk in this truth today and always. Thank you for joining us on Bible Gospel TV and Bible Gospel Radio. Until next time, may God's grace and peace be with you all.